My 29-year-old wife, who is beautiful, expressed her desire to pursue relationships outside of our marriage in clear terms, making it easy for me to understand. To set the stage, I had arranged a fancy dinner at one of our beloved upscale restaurants. I ensured everything was impeccable, from the elegant white tablecloths to the impressive wine selection. I even splurged on a diamond necklace she had been eyeing, spending close to $1,000. Little did I know I would soon need to recoup that expense. Throughout dinner, I sensed her unease. Our usual laid-back conversations carried an undercurrent of tension. She appeared preoccupied, scanning the room as if in search of something or someone. Normally, her gaze met mine steadily, but now it wandered aimlessly. Eventually, after we completed the main course and indulged in more wine, she broached the topic weighing on her mind. Honey, there's something I've been pondering for a while, and I believe it's time to address it. I paused, delicately placing my wine glass on the table. What could she possibly be referring to? Her demeanor had shifted, adopting a seriousness indicative of impending discussion. I pondered potential topics. Was she hinting at wanting to start a family? We had discussed it previously, agreeing to wait until we were more established in our careers and finances. Now that we had reached those milestones, I was eager about the prospect. However, her avoidance of eye contact hinted that it might be something else entirely. Typically, when discussing starting a family, there's radiant joy and an unbreakable focus on each other. But that evening, something felt awry. Honey, we need to have a serious conversation, Andrea began, her expression grave, signaling this was no ordinary talk. I've been doing a lot of soul-searching, and this means a great deal to me, she continued, her voice trembling slightly. I need to explore my identity beyond our relationship. I believe it'll ultimately make me a better partner for you in the long haul. I was taken aback, my thoughts whirling. What exactly are you suggesting? I inquired, striving to maintain composure in my tone. Leaning forward, I attempted to meet her gaze, but she avoided it. I want to pursue relationships with other people, Rob. I hope we can accept this to prevent future pain, she confessed. That revelation struck me like a sledgehammer. My heart raced, heat flooding my face. What exactly do you mean by other people? I demanded, needing clarification. My voice grew louder, a blend of disbelief and frustration seeping through. Are you talking about seeing other men? She hesitated, nibbling her lip. Yes, that's part of it, she admitted at last. The room seemed to spin around me. You're saying you want to date other men and you expect me to be okay with it? I couldn't contain the surge of frustration. Andrea, how could you possibly think this is acceptable? She reached out across the table, aiming for my hand, but I recoiled. I still love you, Rob. That hasn't changed. I just need to delve into this aspect of myself. It's something I must do. Her words felt like a betrayal, and despite her attempts at a calm explanation, I couldn't grasp it. Sitting there with the restaurant's buzz fading into the background, I realized our lives might never be the same. What in the world are you saying, Andrea? Shock seeped into my voice. You want to have an affair, and you expect me to simply agree while you go off with other men. Good grief! My words were louder than intended, drawing the stares of fellow diners. Lower your voice, honey, Andrea hissed. We don't need everyone eavesdropping. It dawned on me then, she had chosen this busy restaurant deliberately, assuming I wouldn't create a scene in public. She had blindsided me and I felt completely disoriented. My stomach churned, a sickly feeling rising, threatening to undo our entire meal. The only question I could muster was, why, Andrea, why other men? I pushed for clarification. What does exploring yourself even entail? Are you implying you want to be physical engaged with other men? Are you leaving me? She gazed at me, her eyes gentle yet resolute. No, Rob, I'm not abandoning you. There are numerous reasons why I believe I must do this. Please trust me when I say I love you profoundly. You're my soulmate. I envision a future with us, aging together and starting a family. However, presently, there are aspects of myself I'm lacking, aspects I need to uncover. I'm asking you just for a brief period to allow me to explore this. Afterward, I'll be fully devoted to you again. I swear. Her words were intended to provide comfort, yet they lingered between us, laden with uncertainty. Could I truly embrace this? Could our marriage endure it? The notion plagued me as I sat there, attempting to process her request. This had to be the ultimate betrayal. During our fifth anniversary dinner, my wife blindsided me by expressing her desire to see other men, she expected me to acquiesce, as if nothing were amiss, assuring me that afterward 
everything would return to normalcy as though nothing had transpired. She even asserted it would enhance her role as a wife. I was speechless, my thoughts a jumbled mess, and I struggled to breathe. Feeling as though I were trapped in a surreal nightmare, I rose from my seat, neatly placed my napkin on the table, and downed my wine in one gulp. Without a word, I set the glass down, turned on my heel, and exited. Honey, where are you going? She called after me. I'm not sure, I replied, without looking back. But you should probably take a cab home. I made my way out of the restaurant, found my car, and simply drove. I had no destination in mind. I just needed to escape. My head throbbed, the pain radiating from the base of my skull, making it difficult to focus on anything else. I drove aimlessly, engulfed in the hum of the engine and the blur of passing streetlights. Time and place became inconsequential. The following morning, I awoke in my car, my head throbbing and the surroundings unfamiliar. Stepping out, I stretched, surveying the area, hoping last night was merely a nightmare. Priority one, I urgently needed a restroom break and a sizable cup of coffee. But before heading home, I required a plan. After attending to nature's call behind a nearby bush, I returned to the car, started the engine, and set off in search of that essential coffee. Discovering a quaint diner, I ordered breakfast alongside my java, settling in to contemplate my options. Allowing my wife to pursue relationships with other men was out of the question. It would undoubtedly spell the demise of our marriage. Despite her assertions from the previous night, I couldn't shake the suspicion that she wasn't the woman I thought I married. Perhaps she was undergoing some sort of crisis, conjuring up ideas utterly detached from reality. I'm no psychiatrist, just a bewildered guy. I powered up my phone, which I had switched off during the night, revealing numerous texts and missed calls from Andrea. She expressed concern about my whereabouts and well-being. At that moment, I didn't feel ready to return home or engage in conversation with her, but I knew avoidance wasn't a solution. Hence, I opted not to respond to her messages just yet. After downing multiple cups of coffee and enjoying a hearty breakfast of eggs and bacon, I outlined a basic plan for my next steps. It was time to confront the issue awaiting me at home. Upon pulling into the driveway, Andrea rushed out, her face etched with worry. Honey, where were you all night? I was terrified, fearing you might have been in an accident or worse, she exclaimed, leaning in for a kiss. Stepping back, I stated firmly, Andrea, I need to freshen up first. Then we need to sit down and thoroughly discuss this self-exploration notion you brought up last night. With that, I strode past her, making a beeline for the bedroom to shed the suit I had worn throughout the night. I indulged in a lengthy, steamy shower, using the time to rehearse my forthcoming words. Doubts plagued my mind. I had to discern if I still had a wife or if this signaled her farewell. Perhaps it was a test of my commitment. Trying to decipher her thoughts drove me to the brink. Undoubtedly, I loved her. We exchanged vows, didn't we? Our grand wedding and European honeymoon were testament to that. The notion of being with another woman hadn't even crossed my mind. I was fully invested, but now it seemed she wasn't on the same page. Fortunately, our lack of children simplified matters. Whether that would change depended entirely on the unfolding days and weeks. After donning fresh attire, I ventured into the kitchen to brew another cup of coffee. Grabbing a notepad and pen, I noticed Andrea seated at the kitchen island, her gaze fixed on me. I attempted to maintain composure, though turmoil churned within. Coffee in hand, I settled opposite her. I initiated, So, Andrea, could you please reiterate why you wish to explore relationships outside our marriage? Andrea met my gaze squarely. Honey, I need to seek validation as a woman. Currently, I feel my needs aren't being met. I want to identify and address those needs independently. So you're unsure of your needs and aim to discover them, I summarized, striving for a steady tone. Additionally, are you proposing a temporary withdrawal from our relationship to pursue your quest? No, honey, I won't depart. I'll remain here in our home with you, Andrea responded promptly. However, I require the autonomy to structure my own schedule and proceed at my own pace. When do you envision commencing this exploration and adapting your new routine, Andrea? Well, I guess any time would suffice, she responded, her voice tinged with uncertainty. Do you support my decision? No, I don't support any of this, Andrea, I stated firmly. When we exchanged vows, we pledged to be lifelong partners and lovers, and now you want to pursue other romantic connections. What am I supposed to make of this? It feels like you're disengaging from our marriage. Honey, it's not as simple as that, Andrea rebutted, her frustration evident. I'm seeking a connection that's been absent for a couple of years now. Our lives have become consumed by work. 
I don't feel valued by you as I did in the early days of our marriage. Valued? Good Lord, everything I do, I do for us, I countered, feeling my anger simmer. I've toiled tirelessly to provide for our future, the one we envisioned when we tied the knot. We're on the brink of paying off this house for crying out loud. I knew I needed to address the most pressing issue. Are you intending to engage in relationships with other men? I inquired, attempting to maintain a steady tone. Honey, I can't say definitively what I'll do. If it feels right with the right person, I might entertain the idea she responded, avoiding my gaze. So, you're contemplating infidelity then? I pressed, unable to conceal my disbelief. It's not infidelity, Rob. It's not cheating if it's done with your knowledge, she replied calmly. My blood pressure skyrocketed. Taking a deep breath, I sipped my coffee, wishing it were something stronger. I needed to remain composed to navigate this conversation effectively. Let me clarify, Andrea, I said, endeavoring to grasp the situation. You plan to meet other men, go out with them, and possibly become physical engaged. Yet, you'll still reside here with me. Is that accurate? Honey, it's not quite that simple. I'm still uncertain, Andrea responded, her tone wavering. It seems pretty clear-cut to me, I countered. What about our relationship? Are we expected to pause our marriage? Do you anticipate us remaining physical engaged while you explore this? Absolutely, Rob. We're a family, you and I. I love you deeply and I want us to remain a family. This is just something I feel compelled to do for myself, she explained, her eyes pleading for comprehension. And how frequently do you envision doing this, Andrea? Every weekend? Multiple times a week? Every night? How far do you plan to take this exploration? I pressed. I haven't decided yet, honey. Why are you so fixated on the specifics? Andrea asked, her frustration evident. Well, I need to understand what my life will entail while you're out meeting, dating, and being with other partners. I don't have a girlfriend, Andrea. Not yet, at least, I remarked, the bitterness slipping into my tone unintentionally. Taking a deep breath, I struggled to contain my anger. Andrea, I need some clarity before we conclude today. Have you genuinely committed to this decision? Have you considered the impact on our marriage? Andrea nodded but evaded a direct response. It seemed she hadn't fully considered my perspective or opinions. Then she uttered the sentence that would define our future. If you love me, you'll allow me to do this. I replied firmly, If you love me, Andrea, you won't proceed with this. This is my ultimatum. Infidelity, even with forewarning, is a deal-breaker in our marriage. Now, my terms needed to be established. Here are my conditions, non-negotiable. If you choose to pursue relationships with other men, you must vacate the premises. I won't share a home with you while you're dating and being physical engaged with others. Bringing them here is out of the question. You'll need to find alternative accommodation. Honey, where am I supposed to go? Perhaps you can stay with one of your friends, like Jessica from school. You've spent time with her. She's divorced and lives alone, right? Ask if you can stay with her for a while. If that's not feasible, you can rent a short-term apartment. You'll be responsible for all expenses, utilities, and your car payments. Andrea worked as a third-grade teacher at an elementary school, earning a substantial salary. Meanwhile, I served as a forensic auditing specialist for a prominent firm, enjoying a good income along with yearly bonuses. Based on her remarks, it seemed I wasn't fulfilling all her needs within our relationship. Andrea appeared to perceive my newfound willingness to compromise as she made eye contact, presuming she had gained the upper hand. Continuing, I stated, So, if you're considering an open marriage, I suppose I'll need to exercise patience while you pursue extramarital relationships. Will you eventually return to our home, Andrea? Honey, absolutely. I cherish you deeply. You're my husband, and I envision building a family with you. I countered, What am I supposed to do while you're involved in physical engaged relationships with other men? Do you expect me to remain faithful? Should I await your return with open arms and love after you've finished with your boyfriends? Have you considered the impact on me at all? I want you as my husband, honey, and only you. Regardless of my actions while I'm away, my feelings for you won't change upon my return. I want you to be my husband and the father of our children. I couldn't help but find this declaration of love peculiar. Despite acknowledging my refusal to allow her boyfriends into our home, she seemed to view it as a triumph. She could engage with other men without concern for my intervention. Very well, you need to arrange your accommodations and inform me by the end of the week. However, we have some matters to address here and now. I need you to relocate your clothes and belongings to the spare bedroom. 
I am unsure if I can share the same bed with you currently. Your plan is too distressing and I feel as though you're leaving me, even if it's not explicitly stated. So, Andrea, what am I to make of all this? Andrea stayed silent, perhaps beginning to realize that I wouldn't simply accept her proposal without question. She might have been surprised by my request for her to vacate our bed, but what did she truly anticipate? Did she believe I was a pushover, willing to passively allow her to pursue affairs, then return home to maintain the facade of a happy marriage, eventually having children and carrying on as if nothing had occurred? Not a chance. Andrea happened to be acquainted with another teacher, Jessica, and I suspected that some of these misguided notions might be stemming from her. Jessica, a divorced fourth-grade teacher at the same school as my wife, was embroiled in a scandal two years ago for cheating on her husband with multiple partners, resulting in her expulsion. At 35 years old, Jessica possessed an attractive appearance and appealing physique. However, she had a tendency to engage in physical engaged relations with any man who showed her attention. I strongly suspected that Jessica was influencing Andrea's desire to explore before starting a family. For me, the reality was straightforward. If Andrea ventured too far, there wouldn't be a family at least not with me. All that would remain was a divorce. I stood up from the table and began to walk away. Andrea inquired, Is that all, Rob? Are you asking me to leave? Yeah, for now. Let me be clear, Andrea. I don't want you to proceed with any of this. We vowed to be faithful when we got married, and now you're planning to break that vow. So, what exactly do you expect me to do? Do you think I'll just stand by while you pursue relationships with other men? If you want an open marriage, then I suppose I'll have the same option. Andrea was left speechless, and I left before our conversation escalated into a confrontation. Grabbing my car keys, I exited the house. Honey, where are you going? She called after me. I'm not sure right now, but remember to move your things to the spare room and start looking for a place to stay. Just remember, you won't be engaging in affairs until you've left, I replied as I left, intentionally closing the door louder than usual. While I briefly considered driving to Jessica's apartment and confronting her, I knew I needed to set aside my anger and frustration for the time being. It was Andrea who had instigated this situation, and she could handle the inconvenience it brought. Plus, I suspected Jessica might be willing to accommodate Andrea, and I had to resist the urge to confront her physically. Monday morning found me up and out of my office before Andrea even stirred. With her intentions in mind, I had a substantial amount of work to do on my strategy. I had no intention of tolerating her infidelity. It stung that she believed she could engage in extramarital affairs, assuming I'd foolishly stand by, allow her to do so, and then pretend everything was fine upon her return. What if she returned with an STD, or worse, pregnant? Absolutely not, I wouldn't stand for it. Step one was contacting my attorney. Fortunately, my attorney happened to be a friend well-versed in various legal matters, from real estate to wills. While I didn't anticipate him handling the divorce directly, he could offer a recommendation. He did just that, referring me to a skilled divorce attorney from his firm. I had a meeting arranged with her later that same afternoon. It would be a difficult discussion, but my new attorney was a seasoned litigator familiar with our state's laws. I aimed to keep this divorce as amicable as possible. In fact, I was content with a fair 50-50 split of our assets. Neither of us had much when we married, and we had both worked diligently to build a comfortable life together. Until now. So I was prepared to divide things evenly. I wasn't entirely devoid of compassion, and squabbling over assets would only prolong the divorce proceedings. The assets weren't worth retaining if it meant dealing with a cheating wife. The necessary paperwork would be prepared and held until I had evidence of my wife's infidelity. Until then, this was merely an initial step on my part. The week seemed interminable. I made a point of spending as little time at home as possible, venturing out every evening mostly to the gym to alleviate stress. I observed Andrea spending considerable time with Jessica. By Thursday, she informed me that she would be staying with Jessica for a couple of weeks until finding a more suitable place. I knew it would be a convenient arrangement for her to be with her boyfriends without any interference from me. It appeared Jessica might be entertaining her own suitors concurrently, turning the situation into quite a mess. This whole situation was simply a colossal mess. On Saturday... Merely a week after commemorating our fifth wedding anniversary, my wife's decision to pursue extramarital affairs became evident as she packed her belongings into her car, preparing to depart. However, she paused just before leaving. Honey, I don't want to go. Are you absolutely certain we can't find a way to resolve things so I can stay? She implored. 
I love you deeply, and I genuinely want to enhance our marriage. Feeling exasperated, I replied, Andrea, if you truly loved me and desired to improve our marriage, you wouldn't proceed with this. I do want you to remain here with me, but I cannot condone your closeness with other men while still being my wife. I love you, but I won't tolerate that. If you won't consider attending marriage counseling to address our issues, I'm unsure what else I can say. So please go. While she loaded her belongings into her car, I drove to the hardware store in my own car to purchase new locks for the house. I replaced three locks and changed the security code for the garage door opener. Throughout Saturday night and all of Sunday, I remained at home, staring at the walls, hoping that Andrea would come to her senses in return. The subsequent week proved exceptionally challenging for me. I visited the gym daily and resumed running in an effort to alleviate my stress. At times I found myself descending into deep depression, longing to approach Andrea and plead for her return. Intellectually, I still struggled to comprehend that my wife was leaving me to pursue extramarital affairs while we remained married. It made me feel like an utter failure. Was I genuinely so inadequate that my wife was willing to openly display her infidelity? Apparently, that was the case. I turned to the internet to delve into the psychology of infidelity and the reasons why spouses cheat. I was astonished to discover that approximately 40% of married individuals engage in infidelity. What was even more surprising was that nearly 90% of them opt to remain in their marriages. Frequently, infidelity is silently tolerated by the other spouse, particularly when children are involved, making it easier for them to accept the unfaithfulness and continue as if it weren't happening. Many cheating wives claim to still love their husbands and families, but seek excitement outside the marriage, feeling something lacking at home. Many women who have affairs express that their households require significant effort. The daily routine of managing a family, juggling kids' activities, and handling mundane chores can make closeness with their husbands seem dull. They long for excitement with a lover who focuses solely on them without immediately discussing children or errands after closeness. Perhaps the key to a successful marriage lies in treating one's wife as if she were having an affair, minus the divorce, simply enjoying the physical aspect. I pondered the idea of trying to pick up my wife at the club she and Jessica frequented. People have affairs for various reasons, a lack of carnal satisfaction in the relationship, an absence of passion, or a loss of connection between spouses, sometimes even as retaliation for their partner's infidelity. Some women claim they cheat to salvage their marriages, though I'm skeptical about that. Nevertheless, it's what researchers studying marital infidelity have reported. Marriage is complex and relationships require effort. Open marriages, where both spouses consent to having other relationships and carnal partners, seldom survive in the long run. Emotional attachments form, feelings are inevitably hurt, and most couples end up divorcing. Polyamorous marriages are equally complicated, especially when children are involved. The threat of introducing a carnally transmitted disease into the relationship is a constant concern. Personally, I believe monogamy is the best approach in a marriage. If both partners don't agree with it, they should reconsider their commitment to each other or look for different individuals to be in a relationship with. Did I neglect my wife and push her away? Did I fail to provide her with enough attention while I focused on building a life for us? Was I mistaken? I'm uncertain. What I do know is that I felt unhappy about my wife leaving our home to engage in extramarital affairs. She sought things she believed I wasn't providing, but I didn't see her actions leading to an improvement in our marriage. And so, the following week passed by slowly once more. I refrained from calling my wife, and Andrea only sent one text, requesting that I forward her mail to her new address. Her communication gave no indication of her desire to salvage our marriage. It was all business. It was evident that she was actively executing her plan to find a boyfriend, or possibly even two, for some enjoyment. The idea crossed my mind to tail her from her apartment to wherever she and Jessica were headed, just to find out who she was meeting. I drove past the apartment multiple times, but resisted the urge to stop. I realized I couldn't subject myself to that. I needed to let her make her decision, or she would never truly be my wife again. With each passing day, the likelihood of her returning diminished. Furthermore, the longer this situation dragged on, the less inclined I was to take her back. A month elapsed with minimal communication between us when, unexpectedly, Andrea showed up at the house unannounced. When her key didn't work in the lock, she rang the doorbell and knocked. I answered the door, maintaining a stoic expression. Andrea, what brings you here today? She replied, 
Honey, my key doesn't seem to work in the lock. What's going on? I responded matter-of-factly. That's because I changed all the locks. I blocked her from entering when she attempted to come inside. What do you want, Andrea? I inquired. She replied, I came to retrieve a few things I left behind when I moved in with Jess. Once again, her visit wasn't about seeing me. It was purely business, focused on her belongings, with little regard for me or the pain she was causing. She didn't seem to realize the hurt I might be experiencing. Was she that naive or deluded to think I wouldn't care about her carnal encounters with other men? Or that I'd eventually take her back? There are some boxes in the garage with your things that I gathered from around the house. Why did you do that, honey? She asked. I let her inside since, after all, it was still partly her home. We proceeded to the garage where she saw numerous boxes filled with her belongings ready for her to take. How long are you planning to stay with Jessica? I inquired. She replied, Jessica's been really supportive. I'll be with her for a bit longer. I'm sure it'll only be a few more months and then I'll be back. A better wife to you, honey. Then we can start a family together. I couldn't help but roll my eyes internally at her comment and feel a sense of disgust. How could she believe that her involvement with other men would somehow make her a better wife and prepare her for motherhood? I had entirely different thoughts on the matter. So, have you found a boyfriend yet? I asked bluntly. Andrea blushed in response, and I didn't need an answer. I already knew. She finally admitted, Jess and I have been on some dates with guys from the club we go to, but that's about it. I couldn't resist probing further. How's the physical engaging with your new boyfriends? Andrea turned even redder and began searching through the boxes for her belongings. I left the garage and returned to the kitchen to have my coffee and read the newspaper. A few minutes later, she emerged with a sizable bag and scanned the kitchen, perhaps expecting chaos after her departure. To her disappointment, it was quite the opposite. I had arranged for a cleaning crew to visit three times a week, so the place was spotless. There were no stacks of dirty dishes, no empty beer bottles, and certainly no piles of laundry. The house was in perfect order, and I focused on maintaining my composure despite my wife's decision to pursue relationships with other men. Need anything else, Andrea? I asked, sensing her curiosity about how things were here without her. She replied, So honey, how have you been since I moved in with Jess? I'm fine, I said. Work keeps me busy, and I'm often traveling. Concerned, she probed further. Have you been going out or just staying home alone? And there it was, the crucial question I anticipated. It was time to introduce a twist into the conversation and observe her reaction. I've been keeping busy, I said. I joined a cycling group that meets twice a week for rides. It's been enjoyable and I've met new people. Afterward, we usually grab a beer and a burger. I made sure to avoid excessive drinking, knowing it wouldn't benefit me. My weight had dropped due to exercise and stress from her actions. Regular physical activity was vital for preventing a breakdown. Her response hinted at more interest in my activities than her initial question implied. She might have begun to realize that her plan wasn't going smoothly. It was possible her loyal husband could meet someone else and no longer need to stay married to her. Her quest to find a boyfriend might have more significant repercussions than she thought. I later found out that Andrea had been seeing two men from the club she frequented with Jessica and had been physical engaged with both of them on multiple occasions. However, neither showed interest in spending quality time with her beyond their encounters. Both men were married and sought only casual fun using Andrea as their source of entertainment, a classic case of pump and dump. By the two-month mark, I had accepted the end of my marriage and was ready to proceed with the next phase of my plan. Andrea had been silent for weeks, indicating her lack of concern for me or our marriage. She was free to pursue her desires without any thought of returning home. Even if she did consider coming back, it would be under various conditions, and I wasn't sure if I would accept her return. Adding to my doubts, I learned that she had taken a vacation to the Dominican Republic with one of her boyfriends during the school break. They enjoyed a sun-soaked getaway, supposedly working on their tans and other indulgences. If this was her idea of strengthening our marriage through infidelity, it fell far short of expectations. The influence of Jessica's persuasive stories, painting me as a neglectful husband who had ignored my wife's needs, had swayed Andrea's perspective before she chose to leave our marriage. Now she lived in a two-bedroom apartment with her dissatisfied divorced friend, and her reputation among colleagues and family members was rapidly declining. When Andrea's mother learned that her daughter had traveled to the Caribbean with another man, she contacted me to inquire about our separation. She likely assumed that we had been having marital issues. 
I disclosed to her that her daughter had left me to pursue sexual relationships with other men, a revelation she found hard to believe. I encouraged her to talk directly to Andrea to get the truth. Andrea's mother confronted her, asking, Andrea, why did you leave your home? What's going on between you and Robert? Is he mistreating you? Andrea responded, No, Mom, he's not mistreating me, but he doesn't provide the excitement I'm currently seeking from a man. I don't feel desired or attractive to him. I need that feeling of being wanted, so I'm seeking it elsewhere for now. I want to have some fun before Rob and I start a family. I plan to return to him in a few months when he'll appreciate me more, and everything will be fine. You'll see. Andrea's mother was surprised by her response and earnestly warned her, Dear, if you engage in extramarital affairs, Robert will not want you as his wife. Cheating on him is the quickest way to end your marriage. Don't you understand that? I know Rob loves me, Mom, Andrea countered confidently. He understands my needs. I'll come back home in a few months, maybe a year at most, and then we'll start a family. Dear, you need to come back to your senses and return home now, her mother urged, or there won't be a marriage or a husband waiting for you. And there definitely won't be any children with him. Do you grasp what I'm saying? Mom, I'm sure Rob loves me, Andrea insisted, standing firm in her beliefs. Even her mother's sincere efforts couldn't sway her. Therefore, adopting the mindset of what's good for the goose is good for the gander, I decided to explore the possibility of a life without her. It had been about three months since Andrea left, and it was time for me to move on. Summoning courage, I asked a woman I knew from cycling for a date, mainly seeking female companionship and a break from the monotonous routine I had endured. Since my wife moved out, my daily routine revolved around work, the gym, cycling, and sleep, repeating day after day as I waited for this chaos to cease. That was my life. Part of me held on to hope that Andrea would come to her senses and end this absurdity by returning home. However, it seemed unlikely. I had to face the reality that she probably wouldn't come back, at least not as the wife I married or the woman I once knew. It seemed she was relishing her newfound freedom, seeking the excitement and validation as a woman that had been lacking in our marriage, echoing the motivation psychologists attribute to married women who cheat on their husbands. So I decided to arrange a date without appearing overly desperate or randomly hitting on someone. That might seem too odd, I thought. I wanted to get to know the people in my cycling group and have them know me before considering inviting one of the women on a date. I wanted it to be a genuine connection, not a sympathy date. Most of my cycling friends were aware of my separation from my wife, and I suspected that some might even know about Andrea's active dating life. In a city not that large, word tends to spread. When I asked Diane, one of the women in the group, to join me for tea or a drink, I was pleasantly surprised when she agreed. I suggested a casual Saturday night outing to a nice place and planned for us to go kayaking on a nearby lake before dinner. I had some experience with kayaking from a few years back, so I knew what to do. Diane had never kayaked before, but she showed interest and we agreed on the plan. So it became a date. We had an enjoyable kayaking adventure, covering approximately 10 miles in about 3 hours. Later, we dined at a charming restaurant where I ordered a craft beer with steak and fries, while Diane chose white wine with pasta. The atmosphere was relaxed and laid back with no pressure. We concluded the evening with ice cream from a waterfront stand, and I drove her home. I expressed my delight at the evening, intending to give her a kiss on the cheek, but she surprised me by leaning in and kissing me on the lips. It was a pleasant and unexpected moment. To avoid seeming too eager, I waited until our regular Tuesday cycling meetup to suggest another date. Surprisingly, Diane expressed concern that my lack of communication meant I didn't enjoy our time together. I assured her that I had a wonderful time and cherished our outing and her company. We arranged a Saturday date for a round of golf. Having read online about the delicate balance of texting and calling to maintain interest, I sent Diane a text on Friday, expressing my excitement for our golf game and proposing a pickup time, offering her the option to meet at the golf club if she preferred. She preferred I pick her up, so we settled on an early afternoon time. Our time on the golf course was enjoyable, despite our amateur golf skills. That evening, we dined at my place, enjoying a barbecue and a bottle of wine. As the night grew late and I prepared to drive her home, Diane took the car keys from me, placed them on the kitchen counter, and asked to see the bedroom. The next morning, I awoke beside a striking woman, Diane, her arm resting on my chest. She had long, dark hair, captivating green eyes, and flawless skin, with a small scar on her chin, adding character to her lovely face. Standing tall at around 5 feet 11 inches, she maintained a slender figure, 
likely weighing around 140 pounds. Her occupation as a nurse in the pediatric department showcased her compassion for others. From the moment we met, her authentic nature and magnetic charm drew me in. We enjoyed breakfast on my patio, and our conversation eventually turned to my plans and the possibility of divorce. Though sensitive, I understood her need to clarify my intentions before investing emotionally in our connection. No woman wants to invest time in a man who might reconcile with his estranged wife soon. As I explained Andrea's peculiar justification for leaving, Diane's expression confirmed what I suspected. She didn't believe Andrea would return. Her insight nudged me toward the next phase of my plan. On Monday morning, I contacted my lawyer to assign an investigator to the case. I wanted to know how many men Andrea was involved with before serving her with divorce papers. It turned out she was dating multiple men, mostly married, gathering at Jessica's apartment for post-club gatherings. Two weeks later, Andrea received the divorce petition, marking the start of a tumultuous period. That night, she showed up at the house, visibly distressed, holding a large brown envelope. I greeted her at the door, asking, Andrea, what brings you here tonight? She replied, Sweetheart, a guy delivered these papers to me today. Why did you file for divorce? I mentioned I'd be home soon, possibly even this week. We can start planning for that baby we discussed. Inviting her inside, I gestured for her to sit in the kitchen, explaining, It's too late for that now, Andrea. I made it clear when you left that I didn't want you to go, but you chose to leave. Attempting to justify herself, she said, Honey, I explained that I needed to discover myself and feel confident. Cutting her off with a touch of sarcasm, I asked, So, do you feel confident now? Are you fulfilled as a woman? Have you explored your desire and new relationships? Met intriguing people? Had your fair share of physical engaged encounters? Growing increasingly frustrated, I pressed on. Because it certainly seems like it to me. I've hardly heard from you since you left. You didn't even bother to call me on my birthday. Probably too busy with one of your flings in the Dominican Republic that week. Your own mother reached out to me wondering why you didn't even bother to call her on Mother's Day. Have you spent this entire time chasing after physical pleasure? She pleaded, Honey, I love you so much and I realize I may have gone too far. I'm coming back home today. I stood my ground. No, you're not. Honey, what are you talking about? I'm still your wife and this is still my home. I'm going back to Jess's place to gather my belongings and I'll be back in a few hours. I clarified, Actually, you can't. Did you go through all the papers in that package you got? Towards the end, there's a judge's ruling stating that you're prohibited from being within 500 feet of this house until the divorce is completed. Technically, you're breaking that court order by being here now. I won't push it, but you need to go, and we can handle this legally to figure things out. Andrea was gradually grasping the gravity of our marriage vows, which encompassed promises such as love, respect, cherish, faithfulness, and the vital component of fidelity. I made it clear that this house didn't hold sentimental value for me. If she wanted it, that was fine. My half, nearly $150,000, was almost paid off, so she could purchase it for that amount. However, if she wasn't willing to pay, we would sell it and divide the proceeds. It was a simple arrangement, but for now, she wasn't returning while I stayed in the house. I escorted her to the door, closed, and locked it behind her. A month later, without the need for a court appearance, we quietly settled our divorce. Andrea received her rightful half of our assets. We sold the house, and I moved forward with my life. Andrea resumed her routine, but I heard from a friend that her charter school had advised her to keep her personal life more discreet. Some parents had learned of her involvement with multiple men in the area and were uncomfortable with her teaching their children. Particularly outspoken were the mothers, who seemed especially uneasy about the situation, suspecting some of the fathers may have been involved with her. Subsequently, Andrea was diagnosed with a sexual transmitted disease, not life-threatening, but requiring a year of abstinence, which wasn't a concern as she was already pregnant. It appeared one of her partners had fathered the child. Andrea's failure to consistently take birth control, her frequent hard drinks consumption, and the lack of contraceptive use were contributing factors. The father remained unidentified, but bore a striking resemblance to one of the teachers at her school, a married man. My divorce was finalized, freeing me from Andrea. It has been about a year since the turmoil with her began. I bought a new house, got promoted at work, and most importantly, Diane and I are now living together. We're excited to share two big announcements. We're getting married this summer, and we're expecting to become parents around Christmas.